Hello and welcome to today's video. Immunology interview prep. Crucial questions for pharma professionals. So whether you are preparing for a job interview in a pharmaceutical industry or simply looking to expand your knowledge or say in any given life science stream you are looking for a job or you have an entrance exam then you are in the right place. Okay, so now pharmaceutical drugs, for example, say you are preparing for a immunology interview to a pharmaceutical industry. Okay, now where the pharmaceutical drugs, they are designed to improve human health, which means understanding the human body is crucial. Now, one of the most complex and fascinating aspects of human body is immunology. Now, our immune system, we know it is a vast network, intricate network that protects us from diseases and infections. Now, it's a key area to study and to find the applications in various uh, aspects okay, of our life, say pharmaceutical or uh, cancer immunology or medical uh, microbiology, etc. Now, immunology itself is a broad and uh, expansive field for understanding how our bodies fight off pathogens to develop vaccines, immunotherapies, uh, other range of concepts and questions is actually extensive. Now, given its vastness, it is challenging to cover every single topic, every single question in just one video. Okay, so here I am with few uh, questions to help you navigate through some of the most crucial immunology sections, okay? Now, I am here discussing questions section-wise, okay? Just to give you an idea and not get confused that from where to start and which question is important and how to go, etc. So, we will explore, explore the actions and effects of pharmaceutical drugs on immune system, dwell into the key concepts, then provide you with concise, clear answers to help you prepare effect effectively. So whether you are an aspiring professional aiming to break into the field or a seasoned expert brushing up on your knowledge, let's dive into this essential immunology questions for pharma professionals. Okay, so this video is going to be a bit lengthy, but I hope that it's helpful. So let's start. So first is innate and adaptive immunity. So whenever you start with immunology, you learn this first, right? So few questions, okay? There are actually many questions under this topic, but few uh, which are basic and I, I think which are actually important when it comes to interview. So we will discuss those. So what is the difference between innate and adaptive immunity? So innate immunity is the body's first line of defense and it provides a rapid and non-specific response. While adaptive immunity is specific, it is developed slowly and it involves memory cells for long-term protection, okay? Then what is the difference between humoral and cell-mediated immunity? Now humoral immunity it uh, involves antibody production by using B cells, while cell-mediated immunity, it involves T cells that directly attack to an infected area or, a, for example, say a cancerous cell. Then do you know about toll-like receptors or how do they contribute to innate immunity? Okay, now this is a next level means uh, advanced question, I can say. So TLRs, they recognize pathogen-associated molecular patterns, that is PAMPs, and they activate immune cell response, initiating the innate immune defense. What is the role of natural killer cell? What is the role of T lymphocytes? Okay, so these are the basic questions. You should at least know what they do. Okay, you may get this question or you may not get this question, but to just revise, so NK cells, they provide rapid responses to viral infected cells, okay, and tumors by inducing apoptosis without prior uh, sensitization. Now, how do uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, that is CTLs, they kill infected cells? Now, CTLs, they recognize and bind to infected cells via their T cell receptors and they release perforins, uh, granenzymes to induce apoptosis in a targeted cell. 
then what is the role of T regulatory cells? T regulatory cells or T regs, they maintain immune uh, hemostasis by suppressing immune response and preventing autoimmunity. Okay, so you can see here the role of cytotoxic T lymphocyte is also important. Okay, they are also important as well as the T reg cells. Okay, so next is explain the concept of immune tolerance and its relevance to autoimmunity or just you can get a question what is immune tolerance so immune tolerance is mechanism by which immune system it avoids attacking body's own tissue okay and its breakdown leads to autoimmune diseases so i will upload a separate video on autoimmunity soon okay so you can brush up there again if you are uh, not uh, clear with the concept of autoimmunity then explain the role of B cells in adaptive immunity now B cells they produce antibodies okay and that specifically they target to the antigens okay like a lock and key mechanism so antibodies are specific to specific antigens they neutralize pathogens and they mark them for destruction by other immune cells that's the role of B cell then what is the role of thymus in immune system? Now here you can get another question like what is the role of spleen? What is the role of lymph nodes? Okay, etc. So the thymus is essential for T cell development and maturation, ensuring the production of production of functional and self tolerant T cells. Okay. So next is how does immune system recognize self from non self? Okay the immune system uses mechanisms like central and peripheral tolerance to distinguish between self antigens and non self antigens preventing from autoimmunity so these are basics from innate and adaptive immunity then next is vaccines and immunization okay so uh, here i would like to remain remind you that there are various vaccines, for example, polio vaccine, smallpox, rabies, etc. Okay, so you may get questions like uh, how polio vaccine is developed or what is uh, DPT and BCG vaccine? Do you know the full form for which disease they are used? Okay, okay, this kind of questions. So also brush up that. Then how do vaccines work to protect against infectious diseases? So vaccines, they stimulate our immune system to recognize and combat pathogens by introducing an antigen that mimics the um, main microorganism that uh, helps promote, or sorry, helps prompt the body to develop immunity. Now, what is the purpose of booster shot in vaccination? So the booster shot, it enhances and prolongs the immunity by re-exposing the immune system to antigen boosting antibody production and memory cell formation next is describe the function of adjuvants in vaccines or uh, how do adjuvants uh, enhance vaccine efficiency so any question you can get so adjuvants they boost the immune response to an antigen in vaccines increasing their effectiveness by prom uh, promoting the stronger and longer lasting immunity okay Next is what is herd immunity and why is it important? So herd immunity, it occurs when a large portion of population becomes immune to a disease, re reducing its spread and thus protecting who are not immune in that particular herd. Now, how do vaccines contribute to eradication of diseases? So yes, vaccines, they do contribute in eradication. How? So vaccines, they stimulate immunity against specific pathogens and reducing their spread and incidences which can lead to eradication of disease when widely administered okay this takes time but yes we can eradicate disease by uh, using vaccines next is monoclonal antibodies and immunotherapies now again um, you should study the company which you are applying okay or you have interview there study their products what type of uh, drugs they manufacture okay uh, uh, whether there is cell line fermentation whether, whether there is monoclonal antibodies produced manufactured okay or there are just antivirals produced okay depending on the product you should study your 
uh, subject properly okay so they will focus mainly on what they want okay if they they are producing cell line uh, fermentations they are using that then you should study about cell line fermentations mainly okay and if you are uh, having or if they are producing products which are like anti cancer antiviral uh, etc then you should go in details for uh, viral cycles okay for um, cancers okay different types of antigens different types of tests which are done to diagnose cancer what are different types of cancer etc etc okay everything in detail you should study just don't keep on uh studying everything okay you will waste your time so be specific study your company study those products and depending on that study properly so now monoclonal antibodies and immunotherapies so uh, what is immunotherapy immunotherapy is a type of treatment which is used for cancer so what are other treatments other treatments are radiation chemotherapy right i i hope you know this so how do monoclonal antibodies they work in immunotherapy now monoclonal antibodies they target specific antigen on cancer cell or pathogens marking them for destruction okay by our immune system or blocking pathways essential for the survival now how does car t cell therapy work and what is its significance now car t cell therapy it involves modifying a patient's t cell to express a chimeric antigen receptors that targets the cancer cell offering a personalized and potent treatment for certain cancers then what are immune checkpoint inhibitors so immune checkpoint inhibitors are a type of immunotherapy that block immune checkpoint proteins from binding with protein partner okay then how do they work so what they do they prevent t cells from attacking the cancer cells thereby they enhance the immune system's ability to destroy the cancer okay now how is immune therapy used to treat allergies now immune therapy or immunotherapy are uh, for allergies such as allergen specific immunotherapy is there which gradually desensitizes the immune system to specific allergens and reduces the allergic reaction okay then next is autoimmunity and allergy now first i have done this question that what is autoimmunity right in i guess innate and adaptive okay so here we will do other questions so how do autoimmune diseases they arise now autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system it mistakenly attacks the body's own tissue okay failing to recognize them as self now what is the role of immunoglobulin e in allergic reactions now here also you can get other questions on role of ig g ig a okay ig uh, different kinds of um, what are different types of uh, igs that is immunoglobulins okay then uh, short short chain long chain uh, what is the difference why it is there etc now ige here it binds to the allergens and it triggers the mast cell and basophil degranulation releasing the histamines and causing allergic symptoms so how are uh, allergies different from autoimmune diseases now allergies they involve immune system overacting to a harmless substance like pollen or a uh, any kind of other spore okay which are actually harmless to our body but still our immune system overreacts to it leading to symptoms like sneezing itching uh, anaphylaxis etc in contrast autoimmune diseases it involves that that our immune system itself attacks the own body cells okay that's where immune autoimmune diseases they arise now how does immune system cause allergic reactions now allergic reactions they occur when immune system mistakenly identifies a harmless substance that is a allergen as a threat this triggers a production of ige antibodies which bind to mast cells and basophils 
upon subsequent exposure to the allergen these cells release histamine and other chemicals leading to symptoms like itching swelling and aphylaxis etc okay that's how an allergic reaction is uh, produced next is antigen presentation and immune cells so what are different cells which are involved in um, antigen presentation then what are mhc molecules okay these are other basic questions so what is the significance of mhc molecule so mhc molecule that is major histocompatibility complex they are present uh, they present peptide antigen to t cells crucial for recognition recognition and initiation of immune response then describe the function of dendritic cell in uh, immune system so dendritic cells they act as antigen presenting cells capturing antigens and presenting them to t cells to initiate an adaptive immune response what is the ex, uh, process of antigen presentation so antigen presentation involves display of antigen fragment on mhc molecule by antigen presenting cells okay that is apcs to t cells and thus initiate the adaptive immune response how do t helper cells they aid in immune responses so t helper cells they assist other immune cells by secreting cytokines enhancing the activity of b cells ctls and macrophages to response to the pathogens okay so next is diagnostics and research tools in immunology now this is actually very vast and even i got confused that what to add here so you can get any kind of uh, instrument what is the principle of that uh, for what purpose it is used how cancer is diagnosed what is mri what is uh, ct scan etc even those questions you can get here okay now again it depends on what type of a company you are applying whether they are using elisa they are using flow cytometry or any other instrument you should know that and you study that properly okay so explain the principle of flow cytometry so flow cytometry it analyzes the physical and chemical characteristics of cells or particles allowing for detection quantification of specific cell population and markers what is immunogenicity assay and why is it important in drug development now an immunogenicity assay it evaluates the potential of a drug to provoke an immune response which is crucial for ensuring safety efficacy in biopharmaceuticals now describe the principle of enzyme linked immunosorbent assay now elisa it detects and quantifies antigens and antibodies using enzyme labeled antibodies and calorimetric substrates providing a measurable signal what is role of immunohistochemistry immunohistochem in diagnostics now immunohistochemistry it uses antibodies to detect specific antigens in tissue sample aiding in the diagnosis and characterization of a disease okay now very important cancer immunology okay my favorite so what is immunosurveillance and how does it help prevent cancer Immunosurveillance involves immune systems continuous monitoring and elimination of emerging cancer cells preventing tumor development that is immunosurveillance what is the concept of immunoediting in cancer now immunoediting is a process by which immune system interacts with cancer cells leading to elimination equilibrium or ex uh, escape of the tumor cells what are different cancer treatments so surgery chemo radiation immunotherapy targeted therapy hormone therapy stem cell transplant etc are the different cancer treatments which are the very commonly used so surgery is most widely used and another one is chemo okay then comes the uh, radiation and immunotherapy then what are the mechanisms by which tumors they evade the immune systems so tumors can evade the immune system through several mechanisms um, like down regulation of mhc molecules because mhc molecules they do what antigen presentation and they 
trigger the immune response. So down regulation of MSC molecules helps tumor to evade our immune system. Secretion of immunosuppressive cytokines, expression of immune checkpoint ligands, creating an immune suppressive tumor microenvironments is very uh, useful mechanisms for tumor to evade our immune system. Now, how does the immune system contribute to detect uh, cancer through biomarkers? So already your video is also done on biomarkers. So you can watch that. I will also mention the link in description box. So the immune system can provide, sorry, can produce specific uh, antibodies and proteins in response to a, a tumor antigen, which can serve as biomarkers for cancer detection. Now, for example, elevated levels of a protein such as prostate specific antigen in prostate cancer or CA125 in ovarian cancer can be detected through blood test. Now, these immune related biomarkers, they help in early diagnosis and monitoring of a cancer progression and response to a treatment. Next is complement system and cytokines. So yes, what are cytokines? A basic question, how they are different from say, other cells or what is the role of cytokine? This is going to be a question. Then what are complement systems? Okay, uh, what are the two uh, pathways that we study in complement system? Okay, so you will get these questions here. So how does a complement system contribute to immunity? So complement system, it enhances the ability of antibodies and phagocytic cells to clear pathogens and uh, damage cells promotes inflammation and also attacks pathogen membranes okay now what is the role of cytokines in immune response cytokines are signaling molecules that mediate and regulate immunity inflammation homeo homeoptosis uh, sorry hematopoiesis co coordinating the body's response to infection and diseases how do complement protein opsonize pathogens so what is opsonization hmm? To revise that also so complement proteins they coat pathogens enhancing their recognition and phagocytosis by immune cell that is how a complement protein helps in opsonizing a pathogen okay next is b cell and t cell in immunity so what is the role of b cell in adaptive immunity so b cell we know that they produce antibodies to specific targeted antigen so this helps in neutralizing pathogen, making them available for destruction by other immune cells. What is the significance of thymus in immune system? So thymus is essential for development of T cells, maturation of T cells, and ensuring that the production of functional and self-tolerance T cells is done properly. Then what is the function of memory cells in immune system? So memory cells are long lived uh, immune cells that remember previous encounters of an antigen, enabling a faster and stronger response upon re-exposure. The next is describe the role of neutrophils in infection control. Neutrophils are first responders to infection, phagocytosis, pathogens and releasing enzymes to destroy them. Then explain the role of lymphatic system in immunity. Now, lymphatic system, uh, it transports lymph, which contains immune cells, antigens, facilit uh, facilitates their interaction in the lymph nodes, okay? So, these are depending on the sections, okay? Few questions which we have discussed. Now, few random questions, which I could not put in the given sections. So, I, I think these are also important. Now suppose you are applying to a company where an antivirals are produced. So take few names of the drug and study their side effects, their long term effects, how they work, their mechanisms. OK, that is very important. For example, say a paracetamol tablet. So if they say, for example, here the last question, what is the mechanism of action of paracetamol in pain and fever reduction? So you should be able to answer these questions, okay? So not there are there are hundreds of drugs, but it is not accepted that uh, 
you should know each and every drug you should know their mechanism but at least study the company that manufactures what kind of drugs and in which uh, disease or for what treatment they are used okay you should know that so for example here say the paracetamol it, it mainly it attacks or oh, sorry it acts by inhibiting the cox enzyme in the brain reducing the synthesis of prostaglandins so prostaglandins are one that cause pain and fever so unlike uh, non steroids okay na nsaids it has minimal anti inflammatory effects making it less impactful on peripheral immune system okay or peripheral immune responses now another question you may get is how does aspirin affect the immune responses so again aspirin inhibits the enzyme cox that is cyclooxygenase which reduces the production of prostaglandins and thromboxanes this anti inflammatory action can help modulate immune response particularly in conditions involving excessive inflammation okay then what is the significance of gut microbiota in immunity so the gut microbiota it influences the development and function of immune system promoting immune tolerance protecting against pathogens okay so how my uh, how might an unknown drug influence the immune response okay like many times it happens that over a counter we take medicines and we don't know the actual uh, actually what is happening to us what the uh, illness is and still we take those drugs okay so for the, or in such case suppose that is an unknown drug okay or the illness is different and you have taken another drug so what effect or what that unknown drug may influence how it may influence our immune response so an unknown drug could either stimulate or suppress the immune system okay depending on its mechanism of action its targeted pathways within our immune system anything can happen it might stimulate the immune response or it might suppress the immune response or you may get a side effect also now this depends now what are biologics and how are they used in immunology so biologics are complex molecules derived from living organisms which are used to treatment treat diseases by targeting specific components of immune system such as antibodies or cytokines okay so those are biologics so yes here we are so i hope we have covered all those questions all the concepts which are important from interview point of question or uh, interview point okay so do like these videos do share these videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you